Dear students, today we are going to discuss about static RAM or static random access memory. It is also called a 6 transistor SRAM. So what is static RAM? RAM is random access memory. That means memory with both read and read capabilities. And SRAM cells use a simple by stable network to hold a data bit. An SRAM cell can hold the stored data bit so long as the power is supplied to the circuit. So SRAM have three operational modes that is when the cell is in the hold state the value of the bit is stored in the cell for future use and during um, a write operation a logic 0 or logic 1 is write into the memory for storage and the value of the stored bit is transmitted to the output world during the read operation. So basically there are three operating modes hold state, read operation and write operation. Okay. So as long as the power is there the value will be stored in the memory. Okay. Next RAM is a volatile memory that is the data stored will be lost when the power is off that means it will lost the data when the power is off. The, off. That means it is opposed to that of the ROM in that case ROM is a non volatile memory that means the data stored will not be lost during the absence in the absence of power. And in RAM it is a volatile memory so data will be lost when the power is off and the RAM is divided into static RAM and dynamic RAM. And static RAM, the major difference between the static and dynamic RAM is in the case of static RAM, feedback storage is used, but in the case of dynamic RAM, capacitive storage is used. So, in the case of static RAM, there is no need of refresh cycles, but in the case of dynamic RAM, it needs refreshment. That means, refresh means uh, first the data contents of the data will be read contents of the memory cell will be read first then it will be write into that memory that is a fun refresh operation okay so dynamic ram re needs refreshment whereas static ram doesn't need the refreshment let us see the there is in the case of a static ram there is a main element that means a memory element so actually the two inverters connected back to back will serve as the memory part and as in the case of the ROM, there will be word line and bit line. So there will be one word line and two bit line and bit lines are represented by BL and BL bar. And also there are two transistors which are called access transistor. Actually this transistor enables this memory cell to access this bit line. Actually this bit line and bit line bar will act as input or output lines. So for reading from the memory cell we have to access this bit lines so for accessing this bit line we are using this access transistors actually this access transistors gate is connected to the word line so whenever we are giving a high signal to this word line then this access transistor will be on then only we can access this bit line okay so there will be two closely coupled inverters two transistors which are access transistors a particular memory cell is enabled by word line which is in turn enable access transistor to bit lines which contains stored data and its inverse okay so bit lines which turn number memory cell contents access okay read so first of all let us see static cmos ram so this is a basic sram static ram now we can see static CMOS RAM it is all it is a six transistor RAM you know here is the inverter that we are using in the case of static RAM and this inverter is replaced with a CMOS structure you know that an inverter can be replaced by a CMOS it will contain a PMOS and an NMOS similarly this inverter also contain a PMOS and NMOS and this inverter will be connected back to this inverter okay let us see this inverter structure can be replaced with this inverter structure. So a PMOS will be there, NMOS will be there, input is taken here, output is taken across here. Okay. So input suppose uh, this is the inverter structure and Q is the input and Q bar is uh, here uh, the output suppose here the input is 1 then corresponding output is 0, Q bar will be 0 because this inverter converts this 1 into 0. Similarly, here the input is 0, the output will be 1. That means whenever we are giving the input to 1, it will be maintained here due to this inverter. Because whenever this is 1, 
the output will be 0 and that output is fed back to this inverter so the output will be 1 that means during two different cycles the input will be stored there so we can say that this will act as a memory element so 1 is keeping there and 0 is keeping there so it will act as a memory element okay so memory has to be connected to the something this memory element should be connected to the something so that we can read or write so it is connected to the bit line and bit bar line so that we can read bit line and we can write into the bit line so memory is connected to bit line bl and bl bar and to access bit line we are using access transistors so this is the memory element here you can see that the first inverter is this one and second inverter is this one and this inverter input is this and it will be connected to the output of this inverter similarly its output is similarly its this is the second inverter input it will be connected to the output of the first inverter okay so this is the major connection here ground will be given here and bit line is shown here this is bit line bar and also there are two transistors which are pre-charged capacitors and its value will be um, vdd that means it will be charged to a voltage of vdd and this is for accessing the bit line okay sorry this is this will provide a high voltage to this bit line based on the value of bit line value okay based on the value given to bit line okay so uh, here is a transistor m actually its transistor is not named this is m1 this is m2 m3 m4 m5 m6 so there are six transistors are there so it will have a name 6 ts ram in some problems you you will be given the name 6 ts ram so it is the six transistor s ram structure okay so let us see here there is a word line word line value may be 1 or 0 so whenever word line equal to 1 access transistor will be on so we can access both bl and bl bar so read and write operation are possible so whenever word line equal to 1 this access transistor gate voltage will be high so these two will be on so we can access a word bit line 1 and bit line bit line and bit line bar okay so that is the thing and whenever WL equal to 0, access transistor will be off. You can see here, whenever WL equal to 0, gate will get 0 voltage. So, this N, these two N MOSs will be off. So, we cannot access this bit line and bit line bar. Okay, whenever WL equal to 0, access transistor will be off and access are lost. So, memory will be in the hold state. So, read and write operation takes place when WL equal to 1 and memory will hold the state whenever wl equal to 0 okay here bl and bl bar act as input lines during the read during the write operations and bl and bl bar act as the output lines during the read operations so you have to notice this that for reading something from the memory this B, we need bl and bl bar Mm, and also for writing mm, to the memory we need bl and bl bar so during the write operations actually we are taking this bl and bl r as out <coughs> input lines and for the read operations we are taking bl and bl r as output lines okay and there is a pre-charge capacitor which is also used in the read and write operation that we can see in the working okay first of all let us see the read operations first we can read whenever we are giving input q equal to 1 and q bar equal to 0 suppose if we are if there is this value in the memory and we have to read this value so that is the first first case and then we will discuss about the reading of the q equal to 0 and q bar equal to 1 so let us see read the read operation first of all let us see it is better to remember this read operation point wise so first of all for the read operations we know that there should be some value in the memory okay that is clear so let that value be q equal to 1 and q bar equal to 0 let us see this diagram so this is the memory and here is some value that is equal to q equal to 1 and q bar equal to 0 value will be there so that is already in the memory and we have to read that value so how it is possible to read what we have to do we have to access the bit lines okay right so bl and bl bar we need so what is the function of bl and bl bar during the read operation it will act as what line input or output line it will be acting as the output lines right in the case of read operations bit line and bl bar will be acting as output lines so in order to access those bit lines we have to set word line equal to 1 so that is the condition 
So WL should be equal to 1 so that we can access BL and BL bar. In the third point what, what will happen to this BL and BL bar? It will act as the output line because we are going to do read operation. Okay. So next we have to check the condition for the pre-charge capacitor. Here there is a pre-charge capacitor here. Now this is high. These two transistor will be on and this BL and BL bar will be ready for reading. Okay. This will be act as the output lines for reading operations. And next there is a pre-charge capacitor and this will be charged to a maximum voltage VDD. So here at this point there will be VDD and here also there will be VDD. Okay. That's clear. Now what is Q equal to 1 and Q bar equal to 0. So what will happen whenever this point is VDD, this point is a lower voltage. So this will capacitor will starts to discharge through this path, right? You can see the direction of the current will be like this, okay? So this will be charged, uh, dis, dis, discharged through this path so that the voltage at this point reduces, okay? You can see the voltage at this point will be reducing, right? So let us see. Whenever Q equal to 1 and Q bar equal to 0, capacitor voltage at the point will be VDD. So, the capacitor um, at the right side will be discharged. So, node voltage will decrease. So, what will happen to this BL bar? BL bar will decrease. And here the value of BL and BL bar will be sent to the sense amplifier. There will be a sense amplifier which is the comparator. So, BL and BL bar line value will be uh, given to the sense amplifier. It will be given as the input to the sense amplifier. So, whenever BL bar decreases, so it will um, it will be reduces the voltage um, across this um, comparator or uh, across the sense amplifier. When capacitor voltage decreases, then the sense amplifier output is 1. That means the sense amplifier negative terminal will be low and the BL terminal will be high. So its output will be 1. So the output is equal to 1. So we can say that output reads as 1. So whenever Q equal to 1 and Q bar equal to 0, output of the sense amplifier is equal to 1. So we can successfully read the memory value. So you can see here, here now this point VDD, here is the VDD equal to 1, here also VDD equal to 1 and here is 0, Q bar equal to 0, Q equal to 1. We have to read this Q value equal to 1. So first of all, we have to set a WL equal to high and bit line and bit line bar will be act as the output lines. And then what will happen to this point? This point voltage is VDD. So it will start discharging through this path. As a result, its voltage at this point will be reducing. So bit line bar will be reducing. And you can see here, here is the voltage is 1 and here VDD. So there is no discharge of this capacity. Here the voltage will be VDD. So bit line voltage is VDD and bit line bar voltage is reducing. So this bit line and bit line bar voltage will be connected to a sense amplifier. Whenever bit line bar, bar is reducing, that means the output of the sense amplifier is increasing because it will be connected to positive and negative terminal of the sense amplifier. Actually, it is a comparator. So, one of the voltage is reducing. Bit line bar voltage is reducing means that sense amplifier output is increasing. That means it will produce one. So, we can say that this bit line bar will show high voltage. Bit line bar is connected to sense amplifier or sense amplifier voltage is high one. So, we can say that it, this will this bit line successfully read the value 1 in the memory okay so that is the way we are reading the value 1 next whenever q equal to 0 and q bar equal to 1 let us write the steps when q equal to 0 and q bar equal to 1 is in the memory for reading that operation wl equal to 1 that is the second step so here in the case of read operation again bl and bl bar are output lines okay Whenever WL equal to 1, these lines will be enabled. And here the capacitor, pre-charge capacitor will be charged to a value VDD. So let us see this diagram. This is VDD and here again this is VDD but here now Q equal to 0. So here there is a voltage difference. So this capacitor starts, dis starts discharging through this path. So the voltage at this point reduces. That is bit line voltage is reducing. Again look at here. Here BL bar is equal to VDD. Here also voltage is high 1. So there is no discharge of this capacitor. So VDD will be keeping here. So this bit line and bit line bar will be connected to a sense amplifier. And here the sense amplifier one of the line will be um, bit line is reducing. But it will be connected to the positive terminal of that sense amplifier. So whenever it is reducing the sense amplifier will produce a high output. Sorry, uh, sorry, sorry it, it will produce a low output. So we can successfully say that we can say that the, in the memory there is a zero value, Q equal to zero value and sense amplifier output is low. That means we can successfully read the memory value equal to zero. 
So actually this ensemblifier output it depends upon the terminals where this BL and BL bar is connected ok. So that's all about this SRAM reading operation. In the next video we will be discussing about the 6th transistor SRAM write operation. Thank you.